six months. That's uh, it's actually a little bit more than that. You start figuring in spring training and how far into uh, into October we are now. It was six months and a bit of of hoping that this was going to turn around a little bit. That you know this team was good. It just wasn't quite performing the way you wanted it to. And at some point. All the numbers, it would all sort of even out and get where it was supposed to get to, and, and you'd be fine in the playoffs. Six months. Snuffed out in 27 hours. <laughs> For the second year in a row. Uh, two games, all it took for Minnesota to uh, to get by you. Five runs is all they put up over those two games, uh, and that's all they had to put up when your Blue Jays are only going to put up one. Matt Robinson with you in the TCA studio. Uh, just checking in quickly again, and we're just sort of going to focus on today and what happened, similar to what we did after game one. There will be a lot of time to post-mortem all of this, and a lot of it has already been done. You've heard me ask a lot of our guests very similar questions about what is going on with this Blue Jays team? Why are they so irritating to watch? And uh, nobody had any very good answers. We all acknowledged it was true, but no one could really put their finger on why it just wasn't working the way it looked like it was supposed to work. So we'll have lots of time to overall look at things. We'll have lots of time to look forward into the off season, what changes need to be made, who's gone, who's going to be back. Let's today just quickly take a look at what actually happened in just sort of a, a post game kind of sense. I also want to say quickly on Thursday, Ian from the Whippersnapper Brewing Company will be on the podcast. That'll be episode 1177. And uh, he's got a new Ottawa Senators themed beer. And I hate to say it. I hate to say it because of the art that was on the can. It's a pretty good beer. It's a pretty good beer. Uh, we'll talk to him all about that, all about some of their other beers and the brewery itself and, and talk a little hockey towards the end. That'll be episode 1177 on Thursday uh, with Ian. Also, apparently I have been wrong for several weeks in teeing up that next week, The Senators' first game is Wednesday, and the Leafs' first game is Thursday. Apparently, the Leafs are also on Wednesday. I have no idea why I thought they were on Thursday, uh, but both of those teams start on Wednesday. That will require a little bit of a a shift in how we release the season preview episodes, but they will both still be out uh, before their respective game ones, Uh, so stick around for that as well. Today, I know what y'all want to talk about. It's the big move. It's It's the Jose Barrios pull in the fourth inning, to go to Yusei Kikuchi while Jose is absolutely dealing and doesn't look like he needs to come out. And man, there's a lot to unpack there. It's nuts. I I get that. Barrios was dealing, and um, this was clearly predetermined. He's going to go through the lineup once. When he gets back to this spot, where they have three out of four guys all pitched up, all hitting from the left side, we're probably going to go to Kikuchi. Unless we're way up, unless we're way down, uh, but the game was still tight, it was 0-0. Now, Buck Martinez said this on the broadcast, and it is an important point. You know what Jose Barrios is doing? You know what he's giving you right now? You're seeing it happen. You're watching it. You don't know what the next guy is going to do. And this isn't a criticism of of Yusei Kikuchi, who quite frankly, after the year he had in 2022, nobody even wanted to see back with the organization this year. And he came back and had a really good year. They used him properly. They managed his innings. They managed his situations. And he had a really nice uh, season for them. So this isn't a criticism of Kikuchi. But he is a guy who's not used to coming out of the pen. Yes, I know he's done it before, but that's not predominantly what he does. And often, starters coming out of the pen struggle a little bit. They're out of their routine. This isn't the way I normally do things. And even if that wasn't the case, even if it was just a regular bullpen arm, you don't have it every day. We've seen it, right? We've seen Romano be very good for most of the year and then sort of at the end, eh. I'm not quite as confident in him. We see it with all kinds of pitchers. Some days, they just don't have it. And today, Barrios did. And so, it's always going to be a risk when you decide, I'm moving from the guy who's dealing right now to the mystery box. That being said, there are people out there, and basically from the moment it happened, who have been calling for John Schneider, the manager of the team's head. 
want him fired right now. Our buddy Matty Lang said before the plane touches down in Toronto, he believes John Schneider will be fired. I don't believe that. I do believe it's possible he's fired this offseason. I think that is on the table. But he will not be fired for that move. He will not be fired for this playoff appearance. This team is run, for better or worse, by a much larger group than that. And a lot of teams are now. This is no longer the days of the old tobacco chewing and spitting manager in the uh, in the dugout, pulling all the strings and doing whatever the hell he feels like. That's over. Very few of those guys left. You are now hearing both pregame and probably mid-game from the GM, from his analytics department, from the training staff that says, here's what you know we're looking for maybe when his velocity starts to drop. We know this about his physiology, these sorts of things. These organizations now are so much bigger than one guy in the dugout calling the shots. So it's very possible John Schneider gets fired this year. It's a disappointing season. Maybe they didn't like some of the ways that, that things took place over the course of the regular season. But it won't be because of what you saw today. And he might be back. I frankly think it's more likely than not that he will be back. But I think it's on the table that he's gone. But to say that management group is going to look at the way he handled this pitching decision in the fourth inning of game two of the wild card series, say he bungled this completely and he will be fired for it. Shake your head. It's not happening that way. Those guys above him were involved in that decision. That was decided before this game ever started. And you can scream and jump up and down all you want about whether or not that's the right way to manage a baseball game. Maybe it isn't. But that's what happened here. So to fire him today or tomorrow or whatever based on what happened during today's game is nothing more than scapegoating him uh, for a decision that they had a hand in. Now, maybe they'll do it. Push somebody overboard to save face. and I guess that's possible. But they were involved in that decision. 100%. 100%. Uh, man, just just a disappointing day all around. You think of, of the situation with Vladdy at second base. And this is sort of like game one where you had your chances. You got guys on base. In the, two of the, or the first two innings, you had two guys on. Later on, you had traffic on the bases again. And you just couldn't bring them around. But it wasn't like you weren't getting to these pitchers I said after game one, you know, Pablo Lopez was pretty good, but he didn't blow you up. You got some hits off him. You just couldn't capitalize. That was the case off Sonny Gray today. In the first inning, I thought it was a disgraceful approach. They had said before the game, we have to be patient with that. this guy. He's going to nibble around the edges. We got to wait him out. Everybody came up swinging at the first pitch. <laughs> so they did end up getting a couple guys on, but there was no patience there. There was no game plan there. And unfortunately, it was the same in the top of the ninth inning. A couple of very, you know, uncompetitive at-bats to finish out the game where they didn't look like they had any idea what they were doing. But you got your chances. And one of them was Vladdy standing out at second base. And Bo Bichette is at the plate. And maybe that shouldn't matter, but it absolutely does in this situation. Vladdy's like trying to pump him up. He's talking to Bo. You got this. You can do this. Meanwhile, the pitcher just turns around, guns it to second, and Vladdy's out. Gets picked off at second base, yammering away at the guy at the plate. Shut up. He knows what he's doing. Focus on what you're doing. Man, brutal. And it would have been brutal no matter what. But it's your best hitter at the plate. It's Bo Bichette. It's one of the only guys who's getting anything done here over the last several weeks. Even coming off the, uh, the injury list. You know, it took him a little while to round back into form. But he's been your best hitter all year. And you are counting on him in that moment to find his pitch. And just just a base hit into left field is going to score. It's going to be big. And you get picked off yakking at him? Man, brutal. Brutal. And there's a lot of people online, rightfully so, saying that parts of this series were a microcosm of the season. Pretty good pitching. Pretty mediocre Hitting and fairly irresponsible on the base paths. Well, you saw a lot of that. The day before, you know, game one, it's Bo Bichette blowing through a stop sign and getting thrown out at at, uh, at home plate. 
Today it's Vladdy getting picked off at second in a baffling base running decision. Like just, or not even a decision, just a gaffe, a mistake. So those are your two big guys. Those are supposed to be your stars, the guy carrying you, and both of them, you know, fuck up a a, a big opportunity in back-to-back days. Um, And we saw it all year. And again, you, I don't want to post-mortem this whole thing, but they came into this uh, this season saying, the little things are going to matter more. No more little mistakes. No more baby mistakes. No more of the little things that are getting away and going to chip away at us. And man, they just, all year on the base paths. Awful decisions on when to steal. Awful decisions on when to, to go for it. And this was another one getting picked off for no reason. And it would be embarrassing enough for any team. But after you made it like the motto of your season, that we're going to do the little things right. Oof. Didn't happen here. Didn't happen here. One of the other things I wanted to touch on, I, I, and I guess it doesn't matter. You have extra slots on your, your playoff roster. I don't know who else you would have replaced him with. Why was Davis Schneider on this playoff roster? Now, I get it. He'd gone for like three or three for his last 33, something like that, to finish the season. So he had been ice cold. And he came in in August, started lighting it up right away, became a great story. It was one of the only fun things to watch about this team for a while. Everyone knew it was unsustainable. I don't think we knew he would dry up quite the way he did at the end. But once you put him on your playoff roster, there has to be a reason to do it. There has to be some utility. And what he brings is the possibility of of some power, right? That maybe in a situation where you're facing somebody tough out of the bullpen and you need to make something happen right now and a home run is the most likely way of getting this done as opposed to trying to string together another single and a double. And instead, they pinch hit Santiago Espinal. And yesterday, they pinch hit with, uh, with Whit Merrifield. So both of those situations were situations that would have been much better suited to Davis Schneider if you're going to have him here. Otherwise, I, d- I don't know what the point was. You know, you use a different pitcher, use a different, have an extra set of legs on the bench, you know, like Cam Eaton or, or whatever to, uh, to help you run. Although that opportunity didn't pre- present itself either to even get Cam Eaton in there. But I'm just saying, I, I, Davis Schneider would have been a better fit in both of the slots that they pinch hit there uh, for Merrifield yesterday and for uh, uh, with Espinal today. So just just weird decisions. You know, and I know I only sort of glanced over the Barrios one in the, the fourth inning. I just, until you believe somebody's going to come out and be honest with you, and it's not going to happen, about who was involved in that decision, how exactly was it made, there's nothing more to say. That was an organizational plan that was put in place before the game even started. That doesn't mean it was right. I'm just telling you, John Schneider did not watch Barrios dominate for four innings and go, yeah, fuck that, I'm getting him out of here. That's not what happened today. That's not how that played out. So, they're done. Again. Not a whole lot else to say about it. You score one run over two games, you're not going to win. You can criticize how Gossman pitched in, in game one. He wasn't great. They had a game plan for him. Uh, Barrios was great. Kikuchi was, eh, the bullpen was fine, obviously. You only gave up five runs in two games. The pitching did its job again. Can you quibble about a certain thing here and there? Yes, of course. But if you're only going to score one run in two games, it's it. It's over. You're done. And it's funny because game two last year, you scored nine runs. Didn't win that one either. This team continues to find new and fun ways to fuck with your day. Or your year, really, as I said off the top. Six months to get to 27 hours. At least they put us out of our misery pretty quickly, eh? That's about it. Like I said, we'll post mortem later. We'll look ahead later. We'll uh, we'll maybe reach out to our buddy Stoughton and, and Arden and some of our other baseball friends here and see what they have to say about all of this in, in a more uh, overarching sense, in a more general sense, kind of from, you know, as we take a step back from it. It's all pretty raw right now, and, and you get to be pissed. I'm pissed. I guess I'm pissed. I, I don't feel as pissed as I felt last year. I sort of watched this whole season with you guys not enjoying this, thinking this team was better than it was, and, and maybe it just wasn't because they showed up in these two games 
and did all the things that they have done all year. And maybe that was always the most predictable. Like, what is it? The 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 old expression: the best predictor of of future behavior is is past behavior. If you just watch these guys do this for six months, pitch well, not hit, run into goofy mistakes on the base paths. You go, I wonder what they're going to do in the playoffs. Probably that. Probably that. And that's exactly what they did. So it's disappointing because, you know, you look ahead to next year, no guarantees that all these pitchers are going to be as healthy and as good as they were. There's certainly going to be turnover everywhere else, but we'll get into that uh, another time. Frustrating game, but uh, perhaps it's no more complicated than then this is who they were, and and they got what they deserved. We can expand on that later on. Thank you so much for checking out the show. Don't forget, on Thursday, Ian from the Whippersnapper Brewing Company will be here. Lots to talk about with him. Uh, all our NHL previews uh, next week. All kinds of good stuff coming up. Also, I can say that uh, in the not-too-distant future, Lee Versailles is going to be back. David Schreider is going to be back. Uh, we got a lot of fun things coming up here over the next couple of weeks, so stick around for all that. We'll, uh, we'll get out of here for tonight. Hope you enjoyed another season of Toronto Blue Jays baseball. My name is Matt Robinson. See you tomorrow. That's it. I cannot work under these conditions. If anybody wants me, I'll be downstairs at McDougal. Call the weekend guy. I don't care.